Hello, everybody. Scott Onsmith here with Agent Mastermind. I uh, appreciate you guys showing up today and hanging with us. I have an amazing class planned for you guys. I have a dear friend actually partner with me in my business. And, uh, man, Doug, I've learned so much from you that uh, I thought, you know what? Keeping this a secret is not very nice of me. So <laughs> I'm honored to have you on. I've used everything you've taught me in presentations with all of my clients, and I tell you, it's paid off in spades. The very first one that I did using your stuff that you're going to share with us today has paid off in spades. And I, I tell you guys, if you're multitasking on this, this is not a class to multitask. It's a, it's a class where we're going to give you like some really good information, a lot of mindset, and then a couple examples at the end. And um, just re really quick, um, Doug, this is Doug Cataray, who's on the call with us today, man. I sincerely appreciate you taking time out of your day. I know you're busy, and um, I just I really appreciate you coming on and sharing with us all this stuff that you have in your mind and what you put together. Mm -hmm. Just so you guys Thank know, really quick before I get started, is um, Doug has put together a 14-week course. We're just going to touch on like 45 minutes of this 14-week course of what he's put together for business owners. Everybody on the call is a true business owner. You should be a dot me like you are. You are the CEO of your company. And this, what we're going to share with you, could have huge impact on your success moving forward if you implement it into your business. So, Doug, man, tell, tell us, like, how did you get started, man? We're like, what's going on here? Why is it, I mean, you closed all this business last year, and not one person asked, what is my rate? What is the cost? Well, like, none of that. What, like, where did you get all this stuff? You know, uh, thank you, Scotty. I greatly appreciate the opportunity to be here and to, you know, and to hopefully, you know, add some value to some people's lives, especially in an industry that is so difficult and complicated these days. Mm -hmm. um, I got into the business back in 1996, and I was fortunate enough to have my mentor uh, take me to a uh, to a consultant, a coach, who basically put it into my head that in order to have a successful business with balance in life, you have to create it around relationships. You have to use the people you establish relationships with as the means to get future business. People can market, people can advertise. I just chose to go down a different path, and it's allowed me to survive in this business and have balance in my life, which is what a lot of people struggle for. But for and, me, and, the biggest thing is, go ahead, I'm sorry. No, no, and, and, and like just, just so everybody knows on the call, your business, and I know you've told me this a thousand times, and I, I've seen you work, 100% of your business is referral based because of what we're, like a small piece of what you're gonna share with us today. Absolutely. Every every client that has ever sat in front of me came from somebody, either a financial planner, a CPA, uh, a realtor, a past client, a friend, a source that knows me, likes me, and trusts me, who endorsed me to the point where that person felt like it was okay to, to use me. And yeah. through my ability to articulate, and that's really what makes us different than everything else or everybody else in our business, is how mm -hmm. we communicate to our clients. And the mindset of what we're about to get into is that. That is your only differentiation tool in what makes you different than everybody else. It's how you articulate what you mean and what you say to your clients. Excellent. And you know, articulate has been a new word of mine. So let me really okay. quick just cover the agenda. So principles okay. of referability. All right. Mm -hmm. We're going to cover that. Um, the restaurant mindset. Um, Doug's going to share that with you. I love that. I love that. Triangle of trust which, guys, if you only take this part of it from the class, you will double your business, I guarantee it, in 12 months. I guarantee it, all right? Yeah. Your why, what is it? You have to ask yourself, and we're going to show you what your why is. We're going to give you an idea of what to say. If somebody says to you in an elevator, hey, what do you do? We're going to give you that exact analogy that is unbelievably powerful. So, and here's the thing. Don't get upset with me on this. Hang with me here. We're going to give you realtors are 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 not worth three percent. Have have you ever thought anybody's thinking that? Well, I'm going to give you so much. Or excuse me, Doug is going to give you so much ammunition that it's just insanity of what your three percent is. And then he's going to share with you how to take it off the table and create a, a like a fear of um, a pain of disconnect. Like, oh, please don't take that away from me. And I, I tell you that part in itself, right there, between the triangle of trust and the realtors, on a, I mean the three percent. What what is your worth, and your why is so huge, Doug. So I appreciate you. So sure. I know everybody's going. I know you didn't just say that, yeah. And and as I'm saying it, this in kind of a business like fun. Um, I want to give you something of value to 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 remove this from your seller's head 
or buyer's tech or whatever it may be that you have to do right away, right up front, and Doug is so good at doing that. So here we go, man. You ready? I'm ready. Let's go. All right. So six, um, you know what? It's not six straights. It's, uh, so getting referrals starts, you know, and um, I left this only slide here. So it's, it begins with you. When a client or a colleague refers you, they are putting their own reputation on the line. Let's talk about the principles of referability. So, okay. Doug, let's talk about character. Talk, talk, talk to me about that, man. Character has always been defined for me as being the one thing that you do when nobody else is looking. And it's amazing to me how many of your clients can sense the kind of person you are long before you enter into a hour-long conversation. They talk about five minutes you have a chance to convince uh, a potential client on who you are, and character is just something that you emulate. It starts from your brain, it comes from your heart, and it's what you articulate out of your mouth to help them understand it. And it's just the it, it's the only way that you can define how to be successful in this business. The people that have good character are the ones that have great success. Excellent. So, inside, so service mm -hmm. principles guide policy. Talk to us about the service. Service for me means that what do you do every time you show up to a client's meeting, phone call, and an email? How are you projecting yourself onto them so that your goal when you're interacting with them is that they're going to want to say a wow and a thank you and a notice of appreciation? If your goal in every interaction with your client is to service them, not just self-fulfilling for yourself, but to service them, find a need. Allow them to hear you tell them that you want to help them in more ways than just helping them find a house. That defines and builds on your character. Absolutely. You know, and, and there's three things that I think are real important. I'm going to bring these up here. So the first one, mm -hmm. from the customer's perspective, have I treated the customer with utmost respect? Mm -hmm. Number two. From the customer's perspective, have I exceeded his or her expectations before you, I mean, like, have you done something of value? And we're going to talk about the law of reciprocity at the end. Have you done mm -hmm. something of value up front so they're like, oh, my God, they feel obligated to listen to you and work with you? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. From the company's perspective. And the last one? Yeah. From the company's the, perspective, is it in the, the best long-term long financial long -term interest? interest? Correct. Correct. Huge. Huge, man. Um, next yeah. one is commitment. T talk to us about commitment. What, what do we got going here? You know what? So many people in our industry are transactionally driven. They want they want to get the baby. They don't care about the labor pains. The problem is during the labor pains of delivering a baby, that's where you define your relationships. And the hardest part about it is that we don't think that our clients will want to talk to us after our that we're done with their transaction. And the reality is, if you approach it with good character and high levels of service you could actually create great friendships, as I'm sure most of you have. You create great friendships with your clients, and those people are the ones that keep you at the forefront of their mind. And that's, and that's pivotal, because the volume of business that we're able to obtain from our past clients is, is limitless. We just have to be willing to commit to more than just a one-time transaction, which means you have to be involved and invested inside of that relationship. So, you know, you brought up a good point about the, the labor pains. I mean, like, so... There's a little. So what you're saying is, there's a little work when meeting with the client that, that should go into it. For, I mean, for a huge. I mean, in all reality, what what it boils down to is a huge income, having a freedom sure. in life, and, and and making a nice living. But there's if if you take very small steps to build the deep relationships, less of them have to. You, you have to work less because now you're getting referrals from the people you build deep relationships with. So a little bit of pain Correct. goes a long way, which means relationships. And you know, and what we're talking about in pain is during the transaction, there's always a moment where the client is going to feel like they need help. The labor pain through this process can be a hundred different things. It's how we, as their consultant, handle those labor pains either by holding their hand, by giving them words of comfort, by addressing the issue, maybe even before the issue becomes an issue. That's how you're able to define those those moments. Those moments are what makes you different than any other potential realtor and any other potential uh, consultant that's going to try and uh, you know navigate their you know their their real estate transaction. It sets you apart because it, it it conveys to them that you care about them as people, not about them as a transaction. And there's a difference between saying it and doing it. 
which is what I hope this conference and this call will actually you know convey to you guys. Correct. So, so like it's so realizing and letting the letting your client know that hey, I know you're going to go through some pain, some fears. Um, as long as we share them together, I can help you through them because this is a huge deal, buy and sell, whatever it may be. It's one of the largest transactions you'll ever have in your life. So, so bringing that to the forefront, letting them know it's okay to show fear, show you know whatever it is, that's okay because I'll help you with that. I mean, opening that up is huge. Well, yeah, you you you, you, you if you're able to put out on the table all the challenges that could potentially happen, you actually right. gain credibility with your clients. Absolutely. And don't hide from the fear. Don't hide from the issues. Don't hide from the problems, but make them open. Put them on the table. Show everybody what can happen. That actually makes you look like more of a professional and more of somebody who cares about the relationship. Now, let me ask you this, Doug, and I don't know if you've done this or not, but would you recommend um, putting the top ten fears into, like, a video format and, like, each one being a video, say, like, kind of addressing that at through the transition, like, the first meeting, you know, the next day, then, hey, just, you know, I've had this question asked to me, and I just wanted to relay what um, typically how it's taken care of, or, like, address that in a video format so that one... I have... Yeah. What I do isn't a video, Scott. What I do is I actually have this letter that I email and mail off to my clients after I meet with them after the initial consultation of 100 things that could potentially cause this flight, and I, I relate it to an airplane analogy. Yeah. I say that there's 100 things that could potentially go wrong that could basically prevent you from owning this beautiful home that you found. So from the onset, I've established that there's 100 things that could go wrong. The best part about it is that when something does go wrong, I can ask them to pull out that sheet of paper and go to number 88 or go to number 2 or go to number 5. And they're, and they're not shocked because I've gone over that with them and they understand that this business isn't perfect. This business is horrendous. It's, it's from a banking world. It's, it's forensically impossible right. not to right. run into challenges. And, and everything right now is so, it's so difficult. And your clients don't know it. It's up to us to convey it, which goes back into what do you really want out of the relationship? Do you want to be that? Do you want to be that friend that helps them go through this, or are you just interested in the transaction? Correct. Love that, man. Love that. Relationships. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it just reiterates what I've been saying. It's that we believe the only genuine way of communication can be given is when it comes from the heart. And so many people in our industry have such a limited belief on who they are. They don't think that they deserve the respect and the and the and the and the adoration of their clients because they feel like anybody can do what they do. The reality is that nobody can do what you do. We do it differently, every single one of us. But what we fight against is the perception of who we are. The problem is that if you approach it as if this is a relationship, that you're about to date somebody for the very first time, you may have had other relationships in the past, but you'll never have a relationship like mine. And the reason you won't ever have one is because I'm able to communicate effectively what you mean to me, and I can demonstrate to you effectively how you are and how I am with you. Absolutely. Love that, man. You know, it's, it's the, the second, the second know. statement is, therefore, if we're a pro-based consultant, we seek to communicate sincere caring for people to whom we're consulting. And it doesn't just care about what it relates to, in, to, you know, to the real estate transaction. People are uprooting their lives when they move. They're uprooting their driving habits, their cleaners, their restaurants, their everything. And so many times we're more focused on just getting the deal closed and less about the emotion that goes into really what these people are doing. It isn't just moving an address. They're uprooting their entire social and physical being, and they're having to replant their roots in another location. That's a big deal. It just gives me chills when you talk about that. It's like clean. I mean, you brought up such little bitty things, but for a huge thing, like cleaners. I mean, like holy crap, where's the there's cleaner and coffee shop and how long is it going to take you to get my oh, kids yeah. to school and what? I mean, how right. is what's there the walking like? I mean, what's the, what's the lights like? What are the what? Are the, is there a train? Is there you know? Is there a huge construction? I mean, the the list goes on. But so uh -huh. many times we get caught up into the day to day working in our business, and we really don't focus working on it, which means that we're not really taking a look at the big picture of who these people are to us, and it goes back to the mindset. Without it, you will have success, but you will never be significant in your business. Whew. That's, that was a strong statement, man. Okay. Uh, let's see. Values. Great yeah. decisions are value-based. Mm -hmm. uh, values come from how you were raised. Do you believe that what you bring to the table is of value to your clients? 
if your clients, if you don't, and I'll, and I'll say it like this, this is the best way I can do it, you've entered into a new relationship, boyfriend, girlfriend, or started dating for the first time. In order for the man or the boy to ask out the girl, the boy has to believe that he's got value and that he has to understand it at the core level, otherwise he'll never get the motivation to ask that girl out. And it's much the same way with our business. If we don't have a very clear, defined value, if we can't ask ourselves or tell ourselves what our why is and who we are, our clients are never going to know who we are for them. So we have to be able to stand up and identify who we are for our clients before we could ever even hope to get them to understand who we are. Oops. So, um, and we're gonna and we're gonna cover the why. We're guys. We're gonna give you a really clear yeah, yeah. definition of that coming up here. So yeah, just bear with us here. Um, yeah. We want to cover a couple of these things. Then we're gonna get into the wall reciprocity, like we talked about the restaurant. And then, mm -hmm. guys, we're gonna give you a close that's just so so powerful and sick that uh, mm -hmm. we'll talk about it. So trust. trust. By speaking the trust, trust, we become trustworthy. Yeah. Trust for me comes along the lines of vulnerability. You have to be able to trust your experience and knowledge to know that it is going to have a positive impact on your interaction with your clients. It's okay to be vulnerable with your clients. It's okay to share personal experiences and to open up and show them that you're not perfect, that you're human. You have to trust in the fact that when you're vulnerable with somebody, they will respect that and honor that, and it actually makes you look more like a true professional and a superstar or a super servant than it does taking your thunder away. And I think a lot of times we get hung up on we have to have this image of perfect in front of our clients, when in reality, they're not looking for perfect. They're looking for somebody who can help them and manage their fears, and that's really what we have to face. Yeah, personal, yeah, and, and yeah, I think you hit it right on the head with sharing. You know, a lot of people were, um, you know, with social media becoming such a big deal, I've talked to a lot of agents, and they're like, I don't want to share my personal life out on the open. And mm -hmm. a couple of the but agents that's where you build I'm, trust. Because people have experienced the same thing. Yes. And so, how often, like, yeah. Go ahead. I was going to say, how often do we get into a conversation about something that we dealt with ourselves and somebody goes, oh, my gosh, I, I had the same thing happen to me. And, yeah. you, and you automatically build that level of trust because now you have congruency. You have an alignment. You've built rapport with that person, and that's instantaneous trust because somebody else has walked a mile in their shoes. Yeah, and like like a perfect example yesterday is I, I there's two people in, that were in text yesterday, and I didn't even realize this until like they told me like yeah they, they're both accountants and I'm going yeah he's an accountant I'm an accountant I'm like oh my god we're like we're like family already you know because we can talk mm -hmm. we, like and like it's just weird how that stuff happens so sharing who you are what you do your likes your dislike whatever it is is I mean I can't even tell you how important that is so I had an agent that a couple years ago that we met with. He says, like, I just can't do it. And then he ended up doing it. He goes, I can't even tell you how my business has changed just from sharing my family. I'm a family guy. I like this, this, the sports meeting, you know, the kayaking, the canoeing, the places we go to travel. It's amazing how people can engage and interact and relate to that stuff. Correct. It's, huge, it's amazing. Huge. But so many times we're afraid to be vulnerable with people, and that's the unfortunate part. No. We believe trusting other people encourage them to trust us. Just trusting others Correct. makes them lose confidence in us. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Growth, a big one that we're all interested in. Yeah, growth is exactly why everybody's here. If anybody that's on this call believes that growth isn't necessary, then it's a, it, you shouldn't even be on the phone call. This whole phone call is about growing as a person, growing as a professional, and that's exactly what that I, that's what I've been doing since 1996. I'm not perfect. I have failures. I have story upon story upon story of things that I wish would have been and turned out differently. But it's gotten me to this point. It's gotten me to have a pretty good business and a pretty good base of business that allows me to, to not have to go out and knock on doors to get new business. But it has come at a price. It has come at a price of saying, I'm not perfect. I will have mistakes, but I will own up to them, and I will demonstrate to my clients that it was it was, we did the best that we could, and I can put my head down on the pillow every night. And the growth end of it is, is that tomorrow is a new day, and your clients who see you grow and understand that honest mistakes happen, there's greater respect in that, and there's greater relationships that can come from that. Some of the greatest travesties in my business have ended up with the best relationships. Yeah, yeah, I agree. That's your time to shine. That's your time to show them your character. Your ability to care about the relationship, it shows your level of service, it shows your character, the values. I mean, it has all that combined into it. Yeah. 
And uh, like like perfect example is I was working with another agent local here, and um, I was working with them, and they had literally, and we've talked about this before, twelve bridges going. And she's she's literally trying to accomplish every single bridge every single day, and I'm like, part of the part of the growth is focusing on one thing, getting it done to completion, crossing the bridge, bringing back some money, and then completing another one. And it's so funny. The next day she calls me up. She goes, "Thank you for giving me permission not to complete all my bridges at the same time, not to be a perfectionist at everything, just to focus on one thing." Right. She actually thanked me for that, and I was like. And that that really kind of is a, that puts things into perspective, you know. Yep, sure does. So, all right. Sure does. So this is I got to tell you this is this is by far one of my favorite topics right here, Doug. Is uh, yeah. Are you yeah. putting the law of reciprocity to work for you? I am a. You guys have. Hmm. You guys have. If if anybody's ever been in the class, I try to start a relationship with the law of reciprocity, which means giving you some value. All the loan officers. That invited you to this class, uh, you know, send an invite to these classes every single week, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. hoping that they will, you know, eventually build a relationship with you, and um, that's what this is all about: is giving something of value. I'm like, you know what? I'm I'm helping all my agents. Why can't I help other loan officers help other real estate agents and real estate agents help other real estate agents and like Correct. giving, 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 and then we all just become one Correct. big family. Like our Facebook Correct. page is over 1,200 people now. And right. the questions in there, and you're like, hey, like my page, and everybody likes it, and it's just that kind of stuff goes so far when it comes to business. Are you mm -hmm. doing that for your sellers and buyers when you first meet with them, giving them something? But here, here's the hardest part with understanding the law of reciprocity. The law of reciprocity states, and many of us can attest to, to this exact example, many times we've walked into a building and somebody's opened the door for us, and our inherent response is thank you, and their inherent response in, in turn is, no problem. That is an exchange of reciprocity. That is somebody doing something for you, and you were paying them with a note of gratitude, and them basically, you know, closing that moment off with a "Hey, it was my pleasure." It also applies in business. The benefit of reciprocity doesn't happen when it's for selfish reasons. When you actually set out to open up a door for somebody in hopes that they're going to tip you, that's not enacting the law of reciprocity. If you open the door because you genuinely want to be that person, you genuinely want to be of value to somebody who you don't know and have good character, that's when the law of reciprocity truly takes effect. It's when you reach out to the world and you identify that you can bring value to people's lives but don't need anything in return. That's the key. That's, that's really the trick of it. And it took me a long time to understand it because many times I wrestled with the idea of aren't I just doing these things for selfish reasons. Then you start peeling away the layers of who you are as a person and realize, I don't need anybody else's help. I genuinely want their help. So right. to go out there and help out a client do more by referring them to a, to a carpenter or to a handyman or to, to, to a lender, for that matter, being able to refer them to a high-quality lender means that you're giving them value. That means that you're giving them value because you know that they're going to be really pleased with that person. And it's going to help your transaction along because you have trust and faith in that person you're referring. That actually helps deepen the relationship. The problem is too many times people do things expecting something in return. And that feels false to people. People can sense that. It's like when you're dating somebody and your boyfriend and girlfriend says they love you and you look at them and go, no, you don't. You're saying those <laughs> words, but you can feel that it's not the same. And every one of us has been in that situation. The Absolutely. difference is that when you finally found that person who says they love you and it, and it resonates through you, that's when you know that the words really mean something. So it's the same thing when you do something for your clients. If it's coming out of genuine character, value, relationships, commitment, all those things that we just discussed, there's never a need to have something in return. Your clients will help you if you set the stage and explain to them how your business is built. But helping them isn't a result of them giving you something in return. It's doing it because you want to, because that's who you are as a person. It's your mindset. Correct. One of the uh, a perfect example of one of the things I do on a regular basis, and I tell you, it just gives me chills thinking about it, is when we're in a restaurant, like we go to Pizza Hut or we go to some place where I see family sitting there and I see a mother and a daughter or whatever, I will buy their I will buy their dinner and just I will I will tell the waitress not to let them know who it is and usually we're gone by the time it all happens but I tell you guys that feeling because somebody did it to me one time and it literally 
changed my life forever because I'm like, wow, that, that really truly is, like, we were at a little tavern, my whole family, my son, my daughter, mm -hmm. we're sitting there, and I go up to pay my bill, and they go, oh, it's been taken care of already. I'm like, what? Like, yeah, like, mm -hmm. I mean, what? Are you, what? Are you kidding me? Yeah. So I'm like, yeah. I, I said, who was it? He goes, I don't know, man. It's, it's taken care of. Yep. And, like, and it's just about being bored, and it's about that. You know, everybody, sh I'm sure, has heard the book called uh, The Secret. Is that what it's called? The Secret? I think so. It's called, I think it's called The Secret. And I'm not plugging the book, because when somebody asked me if I read it, I did read it, and they asked me what I thought about it. And I was challenged with it because it says that you're supposed to go out into the world and you're supposed to ask for what you want and you'll receive it. No. I disagree with that because what I believe is that you should go out to the world and you should give unconditionally. Yes. Give, 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 give. Yes. And then what happens is by the law of reciprocity, you're given back in loaves what you've given away in slices because people genuinely see you as being, as being a giver. Mm -hmm. it's the best way that I can relate to it. The best book, the best book I ever read was by Joel Osteen. I think you guys, uh, I think I've said this before in one of the classes. The seven steps to living your best life now, uh -huh. and it, it kind of like the Zig Ziglar: give, you know, give, and you'll get back three times. Like, and I love the, you know, give slices and you'll get back loaves. It, it's so. I'm telling you guys, it's so true. I can't even tell you how important that one little thing is. So. Um, Love this, brother. Okay, so eight yeah. important points regarding the law of reciprocity. So uh, people uh -huh. expect repayment over time. Yep. The yep. True, false. Um, you know what? Um, generally speaking, it, it, it is it is applicable. I just have never really used that as a you know. So giving and receiving favors is a common exchange. If someone does something for you, the implicitly implicitly expect is that when the circumstances are right, you will do something of approximately equal value for them. For example, your neighbor puts up a fence and so on and so forth. It's the interaction between people. They expect something in return. And so when you do something for somebody, inherently we feel obligated to say thank you or we appreciate it, just like our clients do. Right. It's those moments. It's those moments we have to learn how to capitalize on for our clients to help us with our business, and we can get into that at a later date. So the second one, acts must be mutually rewarding. Mm -hmm. It has to be beneficial for both parties. Right. You know, and, and deposits don't simply accumulate over time either. You actually have to work at it. You have to find ways to understand the people you're dealing with so that you can, and I use, the, I use language as everybody has a love language, so to speak. You have to figure out what those people's languages are, your client's languages are. And there are ways to do it in business to really make deposits in their life that they can help understand that you're not like everybody else. And there are times when you can go into red, absolutely. In any relationship, you can pull money out of that emotional bank account and you can actually go into the negative. And every one of us has had a relationship that doesn't work out. And it's usually because there is no, there, there's no repayment. There's no mutual beneficial, you know, it's not beneficial for both parties. And it just doesn't, it doesn't work. Now, it's okay. But to realize that, to realize that it's okay, you know, it's okay to give Absolutely. and go into the red, and, and to, it's totally okay. Move on. It's you know, Correct. good to go. Correct. Correct. So the uh, fifth one is you make deposits or receive credits by making favorable impressions on others by doing things for them. That goes back to, do you ever have the moment in front of your clients that you can actually make a deposit that isn't related to just the real estate transaction? Yeah, that's where important. in your last transaction. If you think about your last transaction, was there a moment that you could do something for your client that really made them happy? I'll give you an example for me. Every time one of my clients is pregnant or is having a baby and I, and I do find out about it, I send them this book come, that, that comes from this company called I See Me. And it's a personalized name book for their, for their child. I've already taken their application. I've already gotten their money. I've already gotten them secured as a client. But to send them that book, after closing or during the process, the amount of emotional currency that you've built up into their bank account is limitless because you've done something that wasn't expected. It wasn't selfish for me. I did right. it because I genuinely want to celebrate in their child's birth. Right. And that automatically puts me on a level that makes them want to talk about me to other people. Absolutely. Absolutely. Which we're going to talk about here shortly. Yeah. A history of reciprocity promotes trust. Uh, uh, you, you can't do it any differently. You know, being able to being able to give and give and give and not ask for anything in return, that's trust. People people feel that. People can sense that. Totally sense that. Totally I, sense. I, I, I've known that from the day that I've met you. 
every person that I've ever talked about with you and about you when you weren't around, everybody says that you are one of the most giving people that they've ever met. And I can see what happens when you are a giver. Look at your life. Look at your business. Mm-hmm. Look at the people that are listening to you speak now. You're mm-hmm. teaching me things that I never thought was possible, and you've taken the trust and the reciprocity mentality to a whole other level, and look at what you've accomplished. And this is living proof that it works. It does. Yeah, it's amazing. It does. Amazing. It's it's yeah it's it's uh you know every day you know and I appreciate you bring that up Doug I um I pinch myself every day just just being able to right. surround myself with people like you and people that are on the call and you know, loan officers that I get to meet with and real estate agents I get I mean it's just I mean it really brings tears to my eyes to to go you know if I would have never done this and stepped out there and go you know what I'm gonna give as much as I can, possibly can and I just pray that it works out and, you know right. and, and just hope that I actually should. my biggest fulfillment in life right now is seeing someone else take something that we do in one of these classes and truly implement it into their life and have it change their life in a way that's so positive it's crazy, you know? And I get look, look testimonial at what yeah. emails all the time, and yeah. I love that. It's just, look at uh, what we're doing with this phone call, Scott. That's the amazing yeah. part about this. There's mm-hmm. no value in it. There's no, there's no selfish reason for me to do this. This no. is truly me taking my almost 20 years of experience, and hopefully it changes one person's success. Maybe one person gets another listing or another sale that they never would have gotten had they not taken some of this information. And if I'm able to change and impact one person's life, then I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Well, the crazy thing is you change history forever for that person, forever. Absolutely. I mean, Absolutely. I, mean I don't know if you guys think about this. I mean, Doug, I mean, you, every person that comes to you, you know where they came from, where, like who they, who they I mean, yeah. that whole thing. I mean, think about the lives you are changing when you put somebody into a new home you help mm-hmm. someone sell a home and move on, or whatever it is. You're mm-hmm. changing history forever. I mean, it, I mean, it's just it's freaky when you think about something like that. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Reciprocity and can seven, be both eight, positive and, and seven eight are easy. I mean, reciprocity can be a positive and a negative, and it's a very it's a very powerful form of you know of energy. And the problem is that if it's not used correctly, if you don't use it with a true and accurate character and have good values behind it, you can actually sabotage your life more than you're actually going to help it. Because I will tell you, as many times as I've done this, people can sense those individuals that are honest and pure and have great character and high levels of integrity. We've all been in situations where we can feel that something just isn't right about somebody. I'm telling you, if you use this inaccurately, it's actually going to be devastating as opposed to advantageous. Absolutely. And it's true. And that, and when you leverage the power of it, and you do it for the wrong reasons, it's not a good, it's not a good outcome, because yes. you come across as being salesy, and you come across as being somebody that they don't want to trust. Absolutely. The so uh, the restaurant, man. So I, I don't know if I don't know if anybody's on the call from Kalamazoo, but this Doug, and if you ever come here, I'll take you here. It's my uh-huh. favorite place in town. It's called Fandango's. Nice. And they. I don't know. It's the atmosphere. The people know me. They know my name. They, know, they just. They just. I've been there. Maybe it's because I've been there so much. They know what I order. I don't even need a menu. It's just. Mm-hmm. It's just. They have the best blackened mahi mahi in the world. Nice. And nice. here's nice. the crazy well, thing about this. <laughs> yeah. Here's the crazy thing about this is when I'm sitting next to somebody and they're looking at the menu, I sell them the blackened mahi mahi, and yep. it has does yep. nothing yep. for me. It does. You know what I mean? Yep. You're like nope, so, it's just nope. like you, guy, you have to try this, and yep. it's just so. Nope. Tell us a little bit about the restaurant here. Yeah, so so what we're getting into now, this is this is a technique around the mindset. When you've embraced the things that we've discussed, the characters of referability and the law of reciprocity, how you're able to articulate that to your clients is what makes you different than everybody else. So I do a really good job of being able to create stories for my clients so that they can receive what I'm saying and they can feel it because everybody has a sensory about the experience. If somebody says to you, what's your favorite restaurant? Everybody's got a favorite restaurant. Everybody. Most of the time, the favorite restaurant isn't a restaurant that's advertised or has coupons, but every time you go there, it's packed and you're waiting in line. And you go there because the food and the service are at such a high level to what you are looking for that you adamantly tell other people about it. You go to a restaurant and there's the black and mahi-mahi, you're telling them because if at any point in time in dinner they lean over and go, that was a great choice, you feel proud because it validates who you are as a person. Exactly. Not because you're, expecting any, it, you're not expecting anything out of it, but it's no. great to have somebody say thank you. That's yep. a referable moment. 
That's a great opportunity, and those moments are scattered everywhere with our businesses. Every right. time we're in a transaction for 40, 50, 30 days, we have hundreds of those moments that we just overlook. So the rest of the analogy is how I use and how I define for my clients who they are to me. So on a chart, I basically tell them, well, you have a product and we have a process, much the same way that your restaurant has a product, which is the food, and a process, which is the ambiance and the people and everything else. My job is to have you rate me at such a high level, fives on both ends, that you become a raving fan. Somebody who adamantly talks about my black and mahi mahi to everybody under the sun, which drives business to me because I've exceeded your expectations because I know that my product is the best that it can be and that my service and my process with you while you're with me is unlike any other. And it starts with the phone call, the very first phone call you have with your potential client. That's when your service starts. That's when you get to create an impression that will last throughout the transaction. And being yeah. able to define it in an analogy, everybody has a favorite restaurant, so they can feel what it's like sitting at that restaurant as you're explaining it to them, and now they leave the conversation with you going, I understand who he's going to be for me. I understand what he's going to provide to me. He's giving me a, you know, he's giving me, he's selling me a home but he's selling me the black and mahi-mahi because if he makes me feel like I do want to eat my black and mahi-mahi by selling my home, then he's got, a, he's, got, he's got a client for life. Correct. That's exciting. You nail it, man. That's huge. All right. Um, triangle of trust. You did, the, when you showed me this, I'm like, holy <laughs> smokes, man. Like, right. Literally, right. I'm like, okay, Doug, could you repeat that like 17 more times because <laughs> that is just yeah. flat out sick. Yeah. So. Um, I'm, I got my little pen out here. I apologize for my drawing, but I'm going to draw a little circle right here. Yeah. And Doug, who is this down here? That would this be me. Again. That could be you. That could be me. That could be any one of us. The okay, triangle of trust. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. The, tri okay. the, 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 the triangle of trust. Let me let me kind of set the stage for this. For okay. me, visualization of what you are to your clients while you're meeting with them is so key. We so often look past who we are to our clients that we forget about what our clients are really after. And they're really just trying to get a feeling about us that we're not just about a commission, that we're not just about selling a home, that we're not too busy for them. But we don't ever get trained on how to articulate what our hearts really are trying to convey and our heads have so much crap up in it that we can never present it in a way that our clients really go, I get it, I understand it, I believe it, and I like it. So what I did was I, I used this method of what I call the triangle of trust. And I draw it out for my clients every single time. So when a client sits down with me, I start by saying, here I am in the bottom left corner. And here you are at the top, Mr. Client. So at the very top, it's not the past client that's at the top. It's actually the person that you're meeting with. The past client is on the bottom right where you have new client. And that's okay. It can be done however you want. But I like putting the person that I'm talking to at the moment on top. Okay. What you have is each one of those lines that are connecting those points, look at that as a relationship. So the person that refers you, the person that refers you to that past, that new client, that person has put so much trust and faith in your ability to help out whoever they know that they're risking their relationship. So inherently you've got this relationship between those two people and that line is as thick or as thin as they want it to be then that relationship on the bottom is the relationship that you have between your past client who referred you. So now you have these two relationships and it's defined by those lines. Then you have this relationship that you're trying to create between the new client and yourself. When you explain to your client that I care more about the relationship that you have with the person that referred you, you automatically take yourself out of the equation. You've identified for your new client that it's a significantly bigger relationship than just selling them a home. You define for them that you have somebody's respect, somebody's trust, somebody's family, somebody's time invested in this. And as long as you can keep your past clients' needs at the forefront of what your new clients' needs are, to make sure that they're gonna go back to that person and say thank you, you will never steer wrong from how you're able to wow your clients. If you're always concerned about how those two people have a relationship, you will never go wrong with the other two connections. You will never disappoint your new client, and you will never disappoint your past client if all you are concerned with is making sure that those two people 
know that you're doing the best job that you can do for them and that you care about both of them because you've described it in a way that nobody else has been able to. You guys, you guys, all this triangle. You guys see the power? I mean, you guys see the sick power behind this? I mean, so you, like, I mean, the last half of what you just talked about had nothing to do with you as an agent. It had everything to do with your new client and your past client because you're going, hey, listen, I'm not, I will never lie to you. I will never tell you something that's not true that I can't back up. I will never, because of Joe over here referred you to me, and I respect that relationship as much as I respect and want to build a relationship with you. And Joe down here, the past client, the last 15 deals he's referred to me. So you're, like, you're setting the stage for third-party verification like, holy crap. Yeah, yeah. Why would I, why, how would I as an agent ever screw that up, let alone screw mm -hmm. this up? You, mm -hmm. You're totally remove yourself from the equation, guys. This is... This is like and, here, and, 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 this apply, and this applies to a client that wasn't even referred to you. Let's say you get a signed call or a cold call. If you sit down on a piece of paper and explain to them what you ultimately are looking for, and you explain to them that the reason that you're building this relationship with them is because you see in the future a third point or another client, yeah. that helps you define for them that it's bigger, that there's a relationship, which is what people want to know, that you're invested into their fears. They want to know that you care about them, not because you need to get paid, but because you care about them as people, and that you care about what they're going through, and the struggles they're about to embark on, and that you've done this. That's why they're putting their trust in you. So being able to articulate it and to visually display it helps them see that you're not like any other realtor. I can sit down with 100 realtors, and I promise you that I have never had a single realtor come to me and say, this is how my business is built. This is why I'm different. This is who I am to you. And I'll tell you, if you're not using this, you're not competing. You're not competing. I could teach one realtor how to do this and have them go out there and knock on doors, and they wouldn't. They kill everybody because along with Scott's materials and with this language skill, you're untouchable because you're untouchable. people will understand and they will resonate and it will be a relationship. From the first ten minutes of you describing this to them. Yeah, absolutely. Crazy stuff, man. It is crazy. So, so your why, and, and I know we're coming up on the quarter to the hour, so your, your yeah. why, elevator speech, help accomplish people's mm -hmm. dreams and goals, help buyers find their dreams, help sellers, sellers mm -hmm. love helping people, love seeing, I mean, so whatever your why is, let's, let's, I'm going to kind of, this is, I mean, ask yourself, what is your why? Why, what do you do? Why do you do what you do? And so, yeah. realtors are not worth the 3%. So, what if you said, your elevator speech, now Doug, when you share this with me, I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> this is the most insane, idiotic, craziest elevator speech I've ever heard in my life. That has yeah, so yeah, yeah. that has you 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 could put two percent on this, like you uh -huh. could put two percent, two percent, two percent, and still be okay with it. So yep. one percent. Yep. So think about this: if somebody's in an elevator and said, "Hey, Doug, what do you do? What do you do for a living?" Well, yep. I'm a consultant. Explain this to us, Doug. All right, so every time our business, every time we have an interaction with a client, we have the chance to be able to reframe who we are to them. We all can relate to what a police officer is to us. We can all relate what a minister is to us. We can all relate to what a judge is to us or whatever the case may be. So we have all these relationships that we've, we've encountered in our life, and we have these frames that we put around them that make us feel a certain way. We, so often in real estate, are labeled as being something a step above used car Salesman. And unfortunately, that is the farthest thing from the case. The problem is, is that we're that we're unable or unable to communicate. It's just that we don't communicate effectively. We've never taken the time to truly understand our value to our clients. So here's what I say, and this applies to loan officers and realtors in kind. Our industry is broken down into three different facets. When you break it down into commission, you can say 1% is this, 1% is this, and 1% is this. So anytime we have a client that challenges us on our commission, they want us to reduce it, I challenge you to offer this up to them and say, okay, here's who I am to you. And this is where I found my why. There are three things that we do. The first one is we're consultants. Our job isn't to sell a home. Our job is to ask questions, thought-provoking questions, deepen the relationship, challenge our clients and understand that they're coming to us with an idea that may or may not be accurate, it's up to us to help them understand what they truly are looking for. We have to peel away the layers of the onion. We have to peel them away from themselves 
to get to the emotional state of what they're trying to accomplish. And that's an art form in and of itself. But the first thing that we do, we're consultants. That's the first thing that we have to do. But many of us fail at that miserably because we're not, we're not trained in it. The second one is we have to be great negotiators. The mechanics of our business is they're paying realtors 1% to understand the mechanics, how to market our home, what price point to put it at, open the house up, make sure all the logistics and all that are taken care of. That's what we all really do. That's the one thing that you can't buy from a box. When you go buy a for sale by owner package, sellers think that they can sell their home by themselves because it's cheaper. Well, the reality is these three things you can't get out of a box. You can't get a consultant out of a box. You can't get the mechanics of selling out of a box. How to negotiate, understanding the ebbs and flows, understanding the pitfalls, the 99 to 100 things that could potentially go wrong. There's all these things. That's the mechanics of the business. That's the other 1% that realtors get paid a commission for. And then the last one, most people in our industry, both lender and realtor alone, miss out completely. The biggest thing that we are hired to do by our clients is to manage their fears and expectations. We are so poor at managing their fears because we're scared ourselves. We don't spend the time setting clear and precise expectations. We don't convey to them that these are the pitfalls and the challenges. The more you're able to manage your fears and your expectations, I call it your bedside manner. The reason that women have certain doctors in their lives, their, their, their OBs, isn't because of the degree that they got. It isn't because of the school they went to. It isn't because of the grades that they got. It has to do with their bedside manner because the doctor does a really good job of managing their fears. This is what makes you more successful than any of the other two. You have to be great at those, but if there's one area that people really need to improve upon, it's being able to manage your client's fears and expectations. So if the client's sitting there telling you and challenging you on who you are, you can simply lay out those three things and say, listen, here's what I can pay. If you want to negotiate my commission, which one of those three do you want me to take off the table for you, Mr. Client? Do you not want me to call you and talk to you and let you know what could happen? Do you not want me to consult with you and just kind of point you in the right direction? And do you really want me to help you with the mechanics of the business? Either way, I'll take one of those three or two of those three off the table, and you can pay me 1%. It isn't, it isn't that the agents, it isn't that the clients are ever going to agree to that, because once you've explained to them who you are, now they clearly can define it for themselves, your value in the situation. But if we're unable to communicate that, how is the client supposed to know who you are if you don't even know who you are? I mean, think about think about this. So, like, so from here on out, from today, as soon as you get off this call, somebody says, "Hey, what do you do?" I'm a consultant. I help negotiate and I help manage fears. What? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm actually a real estate agent, but really, as a real estate agent, I can I help you make sure that you're making the right decisions, make sure you're doing the right things. I help you negotiate. I mean, you can't. I mean, dude, I love the every time I hear you talk, it's like some one more thing. So you can't buy that in a box. You can't buy negotiate my home for me in a box. I love that, dude. So, and then no, your case, like, there's a lot of stuff going on. Think about that for for sale by owners. Every time there's a for sale by owner, how easy would it be to pick up a piece of paper, walk up to their door and say, listen, Mr. and Mrs. Mr. and Mrs. for sale by owner, I would love to help you sell your home. Here's what you're getting from me that no other agent can define for you. And every agent can say it. Every agent has the ability of speaking it. But no agent does because they've never thought about being able to articulate what their value is inside of the system. Absolutely. And if you take nothing away, if you take nothing away from this conversation, those three things, if you implement that in your mindset and you implement that in your conversations around being able to get a listing or being able to get a buyer, you'd be amazed at the results that you're going to get and how easy those people are going to be able to sign on the dotted line to be able to use you because you've clearly defined it for them who you are. Right. Right. Does that make sense? It t totally makes sense. Totally makes sense. So um, let's see. Will you please share one of the description page again? Oh, um, are you are you not seeing it? Are you guys not seeing that? This is this is it right here. It's consult and negotiate and manage your fears. Yeah. Uh, honestly, I'm not sure. Who it is. Um, a lot of people are. <laughs> oh, the previous page. Okay. All right. Um, let's see. Here we go. This is the one. Like, so like this is like the old. This is what most people like when I say. Mr. or Mrs. Agent, what is your why? Like, why should I work with you, and why should I pay you three, three and a half, four percent to sell my home? And this is what I most of the time hear. I put a sign in your yard. I put a light on there. I put, 
I have flyers, I have virtual tours, I have QR codes, I have text codes. That is all, that's like me saying, I have FHA loan, I have VA loans, I have RD loans, I call you back, I'm a little bit of yeah. application. That's the same that's the same in the industry. It's the same thing everybody says. Nobody has ever looked at it and said, how can I make it so that my clients truly understand mm -hmm. that I bring value to the table? So you add that with the restaurant analogy. You add that with the triangle of trust, and then you bring that out. How can you have any argument on whether or not you're the best person for the job? Because you're not doing it any differently. We all have access to the same tools. Scott, you've got different tools than most people, and you just further emphasize your ability to be a great negotiator and a great marketer and a great all those other things. But your ability to communicate exactly who you are to your clients allows them to truly see who you are. These words that I'm using are not complicated. It's just nobody's ever taken the time to train and to educate and to sit down and say, this is what you should say to help you build a relationship, which yeah. if you look at how many times your clients move, yeah. one buyer works out to be, in my, in my business, every one of the clients that I've ever done business with has worked out to be on average at least two transactions over the lifetime that I've had them. That's yes. free business because I've taken the time to clearly define it and articulate what they mean to me. Yes. And who I am to them, Doug. Um, so, so Sherry says this is so awesome. Uh, I could listen to this over and over again. One of the best webinars I've, t I've attended. Wow, well, thank mean, you, thank, thank you, you, Sherry. Appreciate that. Um, and here, here's Sherry. She's like, I, honestly, I'm not sure who. The, like, so she's getting the invites to class. Sherry, thank you so much for showing up. And you know, and um, Paul has texted you. Is your you, you have an amazing partner there, Glenn Marino, who is an amazing guy over in Illinois. Amazing so, uh, guy. Glenn. Yeah. Glad, yeah. I'm glad I said hello. We've been running together. Yeah, we. Yeah, I'll get there. I promise I will get there. So uh, I will get there with you guys. He's getting ready to run the what the triple bypass, I guess, which is just it makes me have a bypass thinking about it. Or right. Want, yep. <laughs> uh, thank you. Great show. Uh, elevators. Thank you. Thank you. Outstanding information. Excellent point, Doug. Man, you you knocked it out of the park today, man. Paul. Thank you. Scott. What do you think, brother? Isn't this amazing? You still there, Paul? Still muted. Brother, I am here. I am. I'm trying to keep my mute on so that everybody can't hear me typing. It, it is fast and furious, oh. guys. I, I, everyone is asking the same question. So if you don't mind, Scotty, let me just answer yeah. this question one time for everybody. Um, I'm sure my fingers are hurting trying to keep up with all the. <laughs> by the way, uh, more than one comment. This was one of the best webinars they've been on. Really informative. You've changed wow. the, my mindset and the way that I think about approaching my customers and how I approach my business so great stuff today guys boys and girls a lot of you are asking how can you get a copy of the PowerPoint how can you watch this again to hear this over and over again one lady even said she wants to watch it over and over and over <laughs> if you'd like a copy of today's recording if you'd like to get a copy of the PowerPoint presentation if you would like an accountability partner to talk over these things and get the mindset of what we're doing here and what was presented today simply contact the loan professional who invited you they'll be able to get you access to the recording to the PowerPoint and a lot of them are on the call with you right now today and they're having their minds blown too thinking about the mindset behind this kind yeah. of, a, of an approach to, to everything not just your businesses but this kind of approach to your lives guys that, that that's what kind of grabs me on this Doug is this is not just a business approach this is an approach to life this, guys, this is so grassroots about how you live your life. This is so grassroots in how you raise your kids. This is how you raise a family. This is how you operate your life on a day-to-day -day basis. If people understood the power of what it means to just give of themselves, they will never see the end of what is possible that they'll get in return. And I'm living proof of it. I'm not the smartest person out there. I'm not even the most talented, you know, I'm not even the most talented professional. What I have done is I've been able to communicate effectively who I am to my clients, and they yeah. see it. They feel it. They know it. And you know what happens in the first 10 minutes? They trust me. They trust totally. me at a level that they gladly endorse me to their friends and their family, and that's the only thing that I ask for. And the person that refers them always gets a call, and they always get a thank you. They always get told that I was an awesome choice and that they it was the best decision they ever made. And to get a call from the referring source, saying thank you for taking care of my mom, my dad, my coworker, my best friend, my sister, my aunt, my uncle. You yeah. can't ask for better you can't ask for better reciprocity. 
Yeah, so I'm going to leave you guys. I'm going to leave you with one thing, Doug. I know you have to go. I appreciate you. Yeah. I sincerely appreciate you, one, being a part of my team. Just uh, you know, a long road with that brother. And uh, can't wait to uh, just further this relationship. So uh, I'm, I'm going to leave you guys with one thing. And, I, and this is one thing that I learned a long time ago. And it's, it kind of backs up to what Doug says is stop saying. So when, you, so when someone says, hey, you know, what do you do or what are you good at? Um, a lot of people say, I am good at this, I am good at that, I am really good at finding buyers, I'm really good. So what you want to do, and this is, this is so powerful and kind of like where, where Doug goes is, hey, they say I'm really good at negotiating. They say I'm really good at uh, helping buyers. They say, they say, they say I'm really good at helping people manage their fears. They say I'm really good at consulting in people and making sure that people are making the right decision. Who are they? My yep, past correct. clients, my correct. CPAs, my financial planners, my builders, my plumber, my all those people. So yep. it's just a, it's instead of patting yourself on the back, let other people pat yourself on the back. It removes the wall, helps you build that mm -hmm. trust faster. And say, like they say, they say I'm really good at selling homes quick for top dollar. They say I'm really good at follow up and communication. So instead of saying I'm really good at, um, just what they say in front of everything, and it's amazing how that wall comes down. And yep. just the clouds part, and everything opens up, and then you start with <laughs> what happens with you know with this Doug, the triangle of trust, and the three percent thing. Guys, it's just ungodly and powerful. Think about if you were to call your clients and say, "Hey, I just wanted to, I just wanted to call you and tell you I had dinner last night at Fandango's. Oh my God, you got to go try the black and mahi mahi. Hey, I know. Um, mm -hmm. Hey, how's it going? By the way, you know, how's how, how's life in the new home? What's yep. going to happen is you're going to you're going to deepen a relationship. You're going to probably I would challenge you to you, you would probably if you made ten phone calls have a new listing, a new buyer lead because everybody is always talking about one of those things, and we all have several hundred friends that we either work with, friends with, go to like weekend parties with, or whatever. Um, that's just picking up the phone and building that deep relationship and sharing with them what you do and and calling them saying, hey, you know, man, man, I just um, I just want to let you know if you ever need to, you know, you got, got, got anything you're, you, you're having a hard time with, I'm, I'm here for you. If you ever, you know, need help negotiating, if you're thinking about buying a new car, let me give you some pointers. Buy at the end of the month, you know, stuff like hey, that. Scott, yeah. can, can I just say one other thing before we end please, this call? Please do. Here's the difference. The hard part is, is you can't go back into an old relationship and ask for something. This is powerful with your brand new relationships because you're setting the stage. Mm -hmm. You can do this with your past clients who have never seen you be this way, but it takes another mindset and another approach that's more of giving without yeah. expecting anything in return yeah. and being right. humble in front of your clients and apologizing for not being a better consultant or a better professional, but understand that they have the right to reject you, but Absolutely. more often than not, that humility not. and that vulnerability actually strengthens and deepens the relationship. But that's a whole other mindset, and, and Scott, if at some point we want to sit down and have another one of these classes and, you know what? and, and talk a little bit more about one of my uh, – talk about another session, because this is only the first – this is only the, a brief synopsis of what I teach. Right. There's so much more to it, but it takes time. So if yeah. I can be of service for you guys any time in the future, please let me know what I can be a part Here's of. Here's another I one. I, the, one of the best presentations I've ever seen. Uh, Doug, you knocked it. You literally freaking home run tonight, grand slam, whatever. I don't know. Whatever Detroit yeah, Tigers yeah. can muster up over there, Grand Slam, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Scott, do me a favor. Just yeah. know that I thank you so much for the opportunity. I greatly yeah. appreciate being a part of this call. I greatly being a part of appreciate being part of your life. Absolutely, and I, I honestly, I'm of service. Whatever I can do to help anybody improve their business, improve their life, improve the balance that they have, Absolutely. I'm an open book. I, I want to give back. That's who I am. Appreciate that, brother. And uh, all right, guys. Talk to you soon, man. Thanks so much. All right. All right. Well, thank you for being your brother, answering the questions. And uh, you guys, join us every week at Tuesday, 12 o'clock. Uh, join us on Facebook if you're here for the first time. Go to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash agent mastermind. There's over 1,200 members. We uh, share whatever questions you might have, whatever success stories. We love, love, love to be a part of your life. Nothing is ever sold. Nothing is ever talked about that's in a negative manner. We keep it fun. Um, there's another place for that, so that's just that's just where we, as a group, are hanging out. So we'd love to have you join us, and we'll see you right here next week, same same time, same place, on um, Agent Mastermind. Have an amazing rest of the week, and make it a great day. Take care, everybody. Bye bye.
the organizer.